Hey guys, welcome to Wrench to Drive. This is a quick uh, product review. I just wanted to give you a quick look at this this new Injora chassis. This is a, a slight to significant upgrade on the standard Injora SCX-10 II clone guys. And the big thing about this chassis is that fancy schmancy two-speed transmission and the keen eyed of you will note that this is a TRX4 layout guys so pretty cool and there is a very noteworthy feature that I'll get to in a second here guys but you can see there's your shift servo there's your shift linkage there's your battery tray all TRX4 uh, standard guys this comes in two forms guys it comes with the chassis it comes with the chassis the motor transmission and uh, various bits and bobs for a hundred dollars and it comes with the uh, the full meal deal axles wheels tires linkages drive shafts chassis for hundred ninety three dollars guys and in my humble opinion both of these are probably pretty decent value guys I just want to note that just the chassis um, if you hop on something like Jenny's RC, JRC on eBay, guys, you can you can build this not for that amount of money, guys. You're not going to have the motor, you're not going to have the servo, but the, an actual authentic TRX4 transmission, all the uh, the plastic, the chat, the frame rails, the uh, the bits and bobs. You can do all that for not much more than 100 bucks, guys. So, how good a deal is this? Uh, just the chassis. Not a bad deal guys, it's definitely cheaper than buying the bits and bobs off of JRC, it's way cheaper than buying them from Traxxas. But you have to remember, at some point guys, you have to ask yourself the question whether or not you're better off buying the TRX4 Builders Kit. And that goes for about $500 where I live, so it's it's a little more than, uh, it's well it's two and a half times as much money as this, but you have to remember guys that comes with all authentic Traxxas parts and you get that Traxxas quality guys you get portal axles which these are not and I'll show you a little more detail in a minute here guys better shocks Traxxas quality transmission I believe and this I'm not 100% sure of but all the servos the radio everything guys that $500 uh, Traxxas builders kit guys is a darn good deal it comes with an absolute ton of stuff and I'm gonna double check that at some point here and so, so don't quote me on that guys but I'm almost positive it does because at that price point it does make sense guys so let's have a closer look at this guys and just have a have a quick analysis to see if this indeed does look like a good deal and eh, you know it's not bad so two-speed transmission comes with a micro servo which any micro servo will do the job guys those Traxxas ones are kind of pricey you definitely don't need those heavy duty, heavy duty chassis rails battery tray 35 turn 550 motor which might be a little high in the turns guys uh, I'm not 100% sure it seems seems a little on the high side to me all right now we get into the into the goodies here so these are pretty much a standard pair of uh, of Injora axles guys and uh, and shocks and whatnot this is very similar to the SCX 10 clone chassis guys in terms of quality all right so nice tires plastic wheels now uh, the tires are, are easily worth about 30 bucks guys so that's you know that's a that's a legit value the plastic wheels uh, I think uh, if you've watched any of my videos you know that metal wheels are probably the better way to go and uh, to me I almost always would recommend buying a, a chassis without wheels and tires and getting yourself some metal wheels if you don't already have some guys because they are just way more durable. The load that gets put on those on those hexes guys is pretty significant. Standard 313 millimeter wheelbase guys so that's good and it looks really good guys. Not portal axle so the ground clearance isn't going to be as good as a TRX4 but, but that's all right you definitely don't don't need to have that uh, full TRX4 capability it's a purely a question of, of what works for you standard width 240 millimeters at the tires guys it's going to be a, a little smaller at the axles now here's a very very important point I want to show you guys notice that this is a standard center pumpkin axle guys and notice that this drive shaft seems to run to the transmission no problem and it clears this part here on the on the transmission with a little bit of room to spare guys 
I'm assuming that the guys at Injora have set this up and it actually does indeed function properly. And that is a problem if you want to run the actual TRX4 transmission and chassis guys. If you want to run a drive shaft that, that jogs over like this, doesn't work guys. That pumpkin has to be off to the side so you kind of have to run TRX4 axles. In mine I used Red Cat Gen 8 axles and on the front axle guys the pumpkin is offset to this side just not quite enough guys and I had to do some massaging on this to get it to work and I actually made a 3D printed uh, transmission mount that improved the situation quite a bit guys so that standard TRX4 setup not so ideal if you don't want to run TRX4 axles so this setup here guys pretty sweet you know that that is a reason enough alone that this is uh this seems like it's probably worth buying guys because you can run a set of generic axles that's that's a pretty nice uh nice feature guys and i believe that these are are that kind of standard o-star uh injora inexpensive plastic axle set guys which you know they're not great they're not totally horrific and it's kind of hard to tell from these pictures i want to have a little look here and just see if i can maybe get a better idea but uh I've looked at them and I, I was having a hard time figuring out for sure if they're if they're the standard set guys so that's something to, to pay attention to Boy, it sure looks like they are and they, these these shaft these front drive shafts are the, are the weakness in these guys so uh, definitely if you buy one of these it is worth your time to take apart the front end pull out the drive shaft and I've got a video on checking these to make sure they're working properly guys the the if the quality is a little dodgy there could be some binding in there guys and it's a it's a huge problem if it's there if you get a good set and everything's good it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty sweet guys but if they're binding it's a problem now the keen eyed of you might have noticed the problem here guys and I will point it out and I do not know if this is just a problem in marketing or if it's a problem in the actual design guys but as you can see there's the pan hard bar guys goes from the chassis to the outside of the axle those of you with some experience may know that to avoid bump steer the steering link should be parallel to the panhard bar as close to parallel as possible at all costs it should not be going opposite the panhard bar guys now I strongly suspect that you can easily take this apart swap it over to the other side and solve your problem guys it, it would really surprise me if that's not the case now where you might run into a problem, and I'm not 100% sure on this guys, is how the servo mounts. Because if the servo mounts so that the horn only lines up properly with this shaft in this position, that's a, that's a bit of a problem guys, because you, you're, you may be off a little bit on your, on your servo horn geometry. It should work, but it may not be ideal guys. And I'm going to have another look here in a second to try and figure out which way that servo mounts guys and, and we'll try and figure out like this kind of looks like the servo mount sides here and here and it looks like it's right in the center which means you should be okay and we'll double check that a little bit here guys but keep in mind you're gonna have to swap that a lot of times guys in the marketing pictures somebody slapped it together and the person taking the pictures didn't know enough to know what they were looking at you see that all the time in Chinese stuff guys so I wouldn't get too alarmed about that it would surprise me very much if the person who designed this hasn't actually driven it and figured that out uh, if you've watched any of my videos you know that I myself made that same mistake I accidentally uh, in one of my crawler builds uh, put the panhard bar on the wrong side total 100% whoopsie I didn't look at the axle and the panhard bar in the same orientation and I I got confused guys really easy mistake to make when you're designing something and you know easy mirror the part slap the uh, slap it on the other side problem solved guys but uh, definitely pay attention to that because as this sits it is put together wrong so take note of that so let's see here let's take a look at this top view and see if we can get an idea um, Boy, it's hard to tell, isn't it? In the TRX4, the servo goes right here, guys. So I'm assuming that's where it mounts. And it, boy, it sure looks like that's in the center. This chassis actually looks crooked. Like, see that? See how that looks like it's bent there, guys? I'm thinking that's got to be the picture or something. Somebody made a boo boo. But let's just focus on these mounts, guys. It sure looks like it's centered. The panhard bar comes across. This would be swapped over. And the, the problem in the TRX4 chassis, guys, 
and I'll show you this. The other thing you'll run into is that like, the servo horn would be right about here, guys. And there's actually a problem where if you're running a non-Traxxas servo horn, the servo horn actually sits down quite low, guys, and it can interfere with the Panhard bar. So the Traxxas chassis is actually really, 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 really detailed in its design, guys, so that everything fits just right. And something as simple as putting in a servo horn that doesn't fit properly actually can cause a problem, guys. So in this setup, it's possible that there, you know, there's a similar type of deal. I want to say that's unlikely because if we scroll back up, one of the things we'll see is that this comes with a servo horn, guys. So I'm assuming, and hopefully I'm not putting the ass in assume, guys, but I'm assuming that this servo horn is included so that everything works properly, guys. And uh, anyways, bottom line, it should be a, a problem you can work around, guys. Uh, yeah, there you, there you go. That's the servo mount. So it does indeed mount exactly the same as the TRX-4. Boy, it does look like it'll be tight over there, doesn't it, guys? Maybe they actually set this up this way so that, uh, so that it works at all. It'll be really interesting, guys. If anybody watching this, order this orders this and puts it together, uh, by all means, post a comment down below and let us all know what the, what the poop is there. Because uh, this uh, this panhard bar mount on the Traxxas, it's actually adjustable. It can move up and down a couple of notches, guys. And this, it, it kind of looks like it can't. Let's see if we can get a look at it. Boy, it sure looks like it. There isn't an extra hole there, guys. It's tough to say. There may be enough room there. There may not be. It is very difficult to tell. So anyways, guys, that's something to pay attention to. Overall, though, I mean, I'd say this looks pretty good, guys. And for the money, how bad can it be, guys? I mean, I generally, with these Chinese crawlers, my advice would be don't treat them like they're they're built to be indestructible guys treat them like you know kind of like a standard car like an actual real life car that you're driving like you would treat that you know like you know don't be too cruel to it guys treat it like it, you know it can actually break and it's probably going to serve you pretty well guys um definitely one thing to watch with these axles because of those drive shaft problems guys is make sure you adjust your uh your dual rate on your on your steering so that you're not overextending the turning radius guys it's all well and good when they show you you know full 45 degrees double check and make sure everything works nice at that extension guys that there isn't binding because if there's binding knock that back you know five degrees 15 degrees who knows knock it back so there isn't a binding problem and that truck is going to serve you well it might not turn corners real awesome but it probably won't break guys keep that in mind so, you know, a lot of times stuff isn't as bad as some people make it out to be. You know, you see the comments, oh, it broke in five minutes. Grrr. Well, it probably broke for a reason, guys. And not understanding the reason, I get it. You know, I was a kid. I was, I was new to the hobby. You know, sometimes you don't know why something broke and, and you're ticked off. I, I totally get it. That doesn't change the fact that a lot of times there's a reason. And once you know what the reasons are, suddenly you find the hobby a lot more fun because because you're real savvy to all the important stuff right guys so hopefully that's useful to you guys everything about this looks pretty good to me honestly like this this is one of those deals that would tempt me to no end because i love tinkering with stuff guys so you know if you feel the same way i don't know this looks pretty slick guys like look at look at all these nice little trx4 details these cross members look just like trx4 cross members the bumper mounts and everything look like they're proper this looks pretty good guys and the only downside no uh no uh, inner fenders guys but another thing about inner fenders they're actually kind of annoying guys they, they if you're building your own thing this gives you a little more versatility and shock placement the type of shocks you can use guys the trx4 inner fenders are actually a little bit tricky guys uh some aftermarket shocks like the uh, the piggyback style shocks and whatnot don't fit in there so well so this is actually in a lot of ways a good thing because it gives you you know basically unlimited versatility you're going to be able to use whatever shocks you want if you're if you're building your own as we can see the you know the the standard uh the standard cheapo enjora ones work just fine this thing looks pretty good guys and this little servo is going to do the job just fine guys one thing you got to worry about with the uh, adjusting your shift linkage is uh 
if you don't have endpoint adjustment. When you set this thing up, listen, and if you can hear this servo, you know, da 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 all the time, it means that it's not quite uh, adjusting all the way in or all the way out. Like when it's uh, when it's shifting the gear, guys, the servo is uh, is is not sitting in a happy place, guys, where there's no load. It's sitting in a place where it's it's still loaded up. So you're gonna want to adjust this probably down like this is shown here, guys, so that it's not moving as far. And with the Traxxas transmission, one thing you gotta pay attention to is if you shift gears and don't drive the car, like don't move the car, the the plunger may not go all the way in or out because the uh, the shift uh, the shift dog inside hasn't hasn't made it up, and there's a little there's about a millimeter more to move. So whenever you shift gears, you want to make sure you drive the car a little bit forwards or backwards and make sure it's fully in gear so that servo's sitting where it needs to be, guys. So that's something to pay attention to. Now, if you have endpoint adjustment on your radio, if you have a high-end radio, guys, you can adjust the endpoint on the shift servo so that it doesn't do that. And that's something important to pay attention to when you're setting it up, guys. So uh, in theory, I think this will come put together. Most of this stuff does, guys. And uh, that would be something you definitely want to check. But uh, I would guess that they've tweaked it so that uh, hopefully out of the box it works pretty well. Usually this Chinese stuff's not too bad, guys. It, it should work out of the box reasonably well. The biggest thing to check is that front axle, guys. Never hurts to take the axles apart and make sure everything's greased too, guys. Uh, more grease is always better than less grease in a crawler, especially if you're going to get it wet, guys. Uh, another thing that, uh, you know, I'm a little lukewarm on it, guys, but um, sealed bearings. They're not the be all and end all, guys. You still have to try and make an effort to clean your truck if you get it super wet and whatnot. But if you want this thing to last and you're going to get it wet, definitely in the outside of the axles, putting in sealed bearings would be would be a good idea, guys. The other spot is in the uh, is the in, in the inputs, guys. Transmission not quite as important, especially if you're not going to go you know super deep in the water. But I mean, pretty much everybody, even I, have gone axle deep in the water, guys. So. You know, definitely something. Putting in sealed bearings is probably worth worth the money if you like to abuse your crawler, if you like to if you like to go in the mud and the water and stuff like that, guys. And uh, sealed bearings aren't super expensive, and uh, you'll have to double check the bearing sizes. But uh, typically, the the wheel bearings are all the same size, guys. So you just buy a tube of ten and and you change your wheel bearings and, and away you go. So. So there you go. That's my nickel's worth, guys. And this thing looks pretty good, guys. Like this is uh, this is pretty sweet. Uh, like I said, um, what you do kind of depends on what you have. I went the uh, just the chassis route, but I built mine with actual TRX four parts. That worked out okay for me, guys. If you don't have any parts kicking around, this this is probably not terrible, guys. Um, I mean, personally. These days you can get a set of metal axles for about a hundred bucks that are going to be pretty decent guys and I, I did an axles feature not too long ago if you want to check that out. And I would say they're probably an upgrade over these. And the only downside you're going to need to buy links and drive shafts as well guys and those are going to cost you oh somewhere in the 40 to 50 extra dollars range so it's going to jack up the price to more like, uh, what was this, 100 bucks, probably 250. Oh, and then you need wheels and tires, so 300 bucks. So as you can see, it gets expensive in a hurry if you decide to deviate from what you can get for a reasonable price, guys. You know, if you're, and like, like I'm in Canada, so if I'm talking $350, well, I can get that, that Traxxas Builders Kit, guys, for 500. That comes with radio and servos, the whole the whole shooting match, guys. Suddenly, that seems like a pretty good deal. The only way it doesn't is if you don't have that money, right? So definitely think over what you think you want to do in the long run, guys, because that is 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 definitely gonna gonna drive your your financial decision. Now, if you just want to try this out and run it the way it is, guys, hey, that 193 bucks, that's not a bad deal. Free shipping. And keep in mind that US dollars, this is going to be well under 150 guys. So that's that's not bad at all. That is not a lot of money, guys. So, so that's it. You'll have to let me know what you think, guys. But uh, this seems like a pretty good deal to me. And uh, I'm sure that bits and bobs that, uh, that are part of this will become available in the, in the near future here, guys. So definitely uh, bookmark the Enjora site on AliExpress or, uh, or eBay. And uh, 
and look back from time to time. That's it for this time, guys. We'll see you next time on Wrench to Drive, where we ask the eternal question, do you drive to wrench or do you wrench to drive?